This is a project that we've been involved with for a number of years where we've been looking at the element silicon uh, in turf grass uh, for promoting growth and suppressing plant diseases. Uh, you may or may not know that silicon is the second most abundant element in the Earth's crust, but there are many situations where it can be low or limiting and therefore uh, not available to the plant in, in sufficient levels to help protect it from something like biotic stresses like plant diseases. So we had a project that we started about two years ago where we were evaluating a silicon fertilizer uh, from Xcel Minerals. And uh, for an example, uh, in the agronomic situation like with rice and sugarcane, they know rates, how much to apply, when to apply it. But in a turf grass situation, we don't really have that information. So that was part of this study. Uh, we started out on the Envirotron Green here at the University of Florida where we had a number of rates that we looked at. Uh, this was applied to uh, an ultra dwarf uh, Bermuda grass, uh, which was, I believe, uh, floor dwarf. No, tiff dwarf, sorry, it was tiff dwarf. And um, so it's actually just a, a, a Bermuda grass, not a dwarf Bermuda grass. And uh, so we had these increasing rates going from zero to uh, 70 pounds per thousand, even though I had this in metric. And uh, so we replied it in, in April, May, um, and then we followed every month we came out and we collected uh, turf tissue to see how much was accumulating in the plant and then we laid that back to the uh, amounts in the soils and then come November, December what happens is as the muni grass starts to slow down uh, a lot of the superintendents will oversee with either rough bluegrass or rye grass. In this case we used uh, rough bluegrass as our overseed and to follow the accumulation because we want to find out when we apply these silicon fertilizers, uh, what would be the residual activity of these materials? It lasts you know, three months, six months, a year. Try to get an idea about if a superintendent goes to apply it, uh, how long will it last for, and then when would they have to come back and reapply it to the system? So, so that was the study. So while this was ongoing, when we overseeded in November of 2005 uh, with Rupa blue, Bluegrass, we had an outbreak of dollar spot and you can see the dollar spot right here. Um, it causes this sort of uh, circular brown discoloration and it usually looks about the size of a dollar or the, you know, that's sold. And um, so we went out there and we started to, to count the number of dollar spots per experimental unit and we noticed that um, as we increased our rates of the silicon fertilizer, uh, we kind of lowered the amount of disease or dollar spot that was occurring. So here's our control here, uh, here's our highest rate, and we noticed there was about a 36% reduction in the amount of disease on uh, December the 8th of 2005. And when we looked at the uh, leaf tissue, we noticed that as we, again, as we were increasing rates, going from zero up to about a, a 70 pounds per thousand square foot rate, there was a, a pretty good linear relationship uh, so the higher the amount of silicon that was in the plant looks like the lower the disease that was developing. So we brought this back into the greenhouse and uh, we, again we used the exact same rates that we used in the field and uh, we came in and we seeded with our rough blue grass and here you can see uh, the, the inoculum of the pathogen was carried on these uh, seeds and you can see how uh, with our control that the pathogen is colonizing the turf throughout the pot but at our highest rate, which is equivalent to the 70 pounds per thousand, uh, you can see that there's very little uh, colonization. So there's a good suppression going on. And here's uh, this graph. So here's our dollar spot development on our y-axis. This is over time. And these are our different rates again. So here's our control, the red. And then again, the uh, bluish is our highest rate at 70 pounds per thousand. Again, you see we're getting quite a reduction and it kind of goes along with the rate of application. So what we can do from a plant pathology perspective, we can calculate what's called an area and disease progress curve, how much the disease is occurring over time. Doesn't tell you about the onset, doesn't tell you about the uh, final rate, but it gives you an idea about how much the disease is accumulating in time. So we can take that, a, that AUDPC and we can regress that on our increase. So as you see, as we increase the rates, we're linearly decreasing the, the total area of the disease progress curve that's occurring. And again, as we increase our rates, uh, we're seeing a nice uh, linear increase in the accumulation of silicon in the leaf tissue.
And so we concluded that um, uh, you know, dollar spot can be reduced by accelerator because it's supplying soluble silicon to the plant. Uh, the more you apply, the more the plant takes up, and therefore the greater the disease suppression. We believe that it probably you need to be at around a 1% accumulation of the plant tissue to get the best disease suppression. Okay, so while the study was ongoing, uh, questions arose as to uh, when you apply this material, how should we be putting it out? Because we had done it as a top dressing, but we were curious as to um, could we maybe get the material closer to the root systems by core airifying and then applying the material. So in 2006, we set up an experiment at the Envirotron Green. Uh, it was on uh, Tiff Eagle, and we compared a 50 pounds per thousand square foot rate to a control. Uh, top dressed and core airified. And we followed that for about a four month period and it looked like core airification uh, was able to get the material closer to the root zone and so there was a, um, a greater accumulation in the plant tissue versus top dressing and the control. So uh, last summer we repeated those experiments down at Citra and uh, we saw some similar um, um, results. So what does this all mean? So for an example, we've done research in St. Augustine grass against gray leaf spot, and we've been able to demonstrate that uh, when you apply a silicon fertilizer, you can suppress the disease uh, just like a fungicide almost, like a contact fungicide for an example. Uh, we've seen similar results with uh, Bermuda grass against bipolaris leaf spot, where you apply this material, we've seen disease suppression. And now we have data showing that it also will work against a uh, dollar spot caused by sclerotin homocarpa. So if you're seeing, you know, 30 to 40 percent disease suppression, this indicates that this could be a very good uh, tool to be used to help in suppressing plant diseases. Will it stand as a standalone? Probably not, but it could be part of a, an overall integrated management program and it could help in uh, reducing the number or even rates of uh, fungicide applications. And that's where we're trying to go with this uh, research.